Hi Virgo. It's been a while, I know. Sorry. Um, just been really busy. These changes are happening. Things are occurring, you know. Mercury retrograde. I had a situation with, you know, my devices and things like that, but I was distracted from focusing too much on it. So I just kind of like got around to fixing things when I could. And here I am. I'm so glad that the retrograde is over. We're still in that shadow phase and we will be for a little moment, not too much longer. Um, so it probably feels like there's been some tensions or some pressures that have been released. You know, you might have gained clarity in some situations or there might just be like the release of some tensions. But Mars is in Scorpio right now, which is where it, you know, the sign that it lives in or the one that it rules. So we could be feeling, you know, um, kind of ambitious, emotionally ambitious, right? And what I mean by that is just kind of like letting our emotions sort of like um, impact us in a way that makes us sort of take the initiative, right? Okay, where is our motivation? What is our motivation? How are we staying motivated and what is motivating us? Okay, so I'm going to make this a little bit shorter. It's going to be an abbreviated ascendant spread just because I don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to give you a sun, moon, past, present, and future, and an ascendant card at the top of the reading, okay? So I've already cut it. I'm going to lay these out. Definitely like, share, and subscribe, you guys. Follow me on uh, Instagram. <laughs> I am Providence Tarot. I'm also NYC Kendrick. If you go to NYC Kendrick, that's just my personal account. You know, mainly I put up dance things there and my fitness stuff and just, you know, my everyday stuff. Uh, I do have a food account. It's called The Tongue Pop, okay? And then I have another one that just kind of shows pictures of, of, not of me, just kind of of the city. You might see pictures of me at the bottom, but I've changed the dynamic of that page to kind of give you a different side of me. Okay, so the Seven of Pentacles is here at the bottom of the deck. This is talking about, you know, moving forward with something that might be um, financial or something that is centered around money, time, or investing, right? So it could be that you are really thinking, you are really weighing some things out on how you're investing in something or what you might be investing in and how you relate to this this um, stability or this 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 reality, right? Uh, what are, what what's practical about it? You know, uh, what works, what doesn't work. You know what I mean. You could even be just uh, being very investigative in terms of like what you are trying to figure out. Um, it is Saturn and Taurus, and Saturn is talking about time, and it's also talking about learning, okay? Uh, lessons and uh, being patient, for sure. So this does talk about being patient, and you might just be getting a little bit emotionally uh, 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 affected by the patience that you're being asked to practice right now. Um, you know, it does also talk about you sort of uh, uh, experiencing these moments of feeling disappointed just because of something moving slower than usual. You know, Taurus is a very slow sign. It tries your energy. It's fixed. So this could just be the details of something being ironed out for the good and not for you know, the over-dramatization of what isn't coming towards you now, you know what I mean? So just be patient and allow something to uh, to grow and to come into form, you know? You don't wanna rush anything, that's what I'm getting. Don't rush it, you know what I mean? And don't rush whenever you're doing a job or doing something because that's when you make a mistake and Saturn doesn't want you to make a mistake and, uh, you know, Taurus uh, wants, you know, wants to be comfortable, you know what I mean? And Taurus also wants to, um, have security, you know what I mean? So if you're impatient, then the thing that you're trying to get, trying to do, trying to build, trying to earn, trying to grow, isn't going to be, you know, what you want it to be. So really put the attention into the the detail, right? Also, uh, you need to make some choices, you know what I mean? You could be holding back on making some choices, or you could just be stubborn in terms of like making some choices or agreeing to something. You're You're stubborn about making a decision about something, right? Because, you know, somebody else may have influenced you or may have given you some advice that you probably didn't want to take, uh, Virgo, but now you're realizing that it actually might be good advice, okay? So let's go ahead and look at your center card. This card that you have at the center of the reading is the Four of Swords, and that's Jupiter and 
Libra, okay? So you might be dealing with an Aries, you could be dealing with a Cancer, but definitely a Libra, or you could be dealing with how you're relating to, you know, your responsibilities, you know? So you might be feeling overwhelmed with your responsibility, and, and you might need to be taking a break so that you can uh, think about what it is, you know? This is kind of like you being in repose. You're trying to, like, uh, maybe strategize or uh, calculate something or try to figure out, you know, how to make something, um, how to be okay with something, right? Because the Four of Swords does give that. It's kind of like the, it may be in a relationship is overwhelming you, or you might have some questions about a relationship, or you may have formed your own opinion about a relationship, uh, <clears throat> or a friendship, or something like that, you know? Um, Jupiter is talking about the overabundance of something or just something being overwhelming, something being larger than it, 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 it larger, right? So there might be a, a situation with something that you're relating to. It could even be work or a boss, right? Or it could be something with like a friend and work. Um, <clears throat> the fours do talk about completion. So it could be saying that you are, you've made your mind up about something. I believe, and it is Libra, right? So it's saying that you've made your mind up and it's weighing heavily on one side uh, in terms of this situation. I think you might be pulling back because you might be feeling like you're being left out or you might just be feeling like a situation might be one-sided. Okay, so let's look at the challenging card or what's crossing it. There's the high priest, which is hierophant energy. Let me show you what the four of swords looks like, okay? sitting there thinking, determined intently, intently thinking, rest and repose, you know? And it's also kind of like protecting yourself, right? Because it is a four. So you could just be protecting yourself and staying quiet or just being stern about something or you you made your mind up about something and nobody's gonna convince you otherwise. That's why that tree is there. You know what I mean? And the high priest, which is the high priestess energy, it's Taurus. So this is talking about fixed earth energy. This is also talking about, you know, uh, opinions or conditions, you know, uh, how others might see you or how you see yourself. You know, this is also talking about your, your, how, what you believe, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and this is also just saying, you know, there's some stubbornness here in terms of like work. Uh, um, you know, there might be a little bit of some conflict because you're trying to determine what's best or what, what actually is useful right? What you feel like is going to be uh, beneficial, right? That type of thing. It's a five. So it's related to that five, fifth house energy of, of Leo. So this could be, you know, you're being tested or your ego might be being tested, or you might just be feeling like your person, your person's authority might be being tested. You know what I mean? Uh, so <clears throat> there, there's something there. I feel like you're very determined in terms of something. And I'm getting that, you know, you you kind of are, are, are set in place. You know what I mean? Something is very in stone right now. Uh, you know, you could be also be just kind of like acting tough or being tough or, you know, trying to assert yourself in some kind of way. There is some conflict in understanding why something is happen and happening and what it means because the Hierophant could be talking about the challenge of understanding the meaning behind something and why it might be happening to you, right? You might be thinking that it's happening to you because it's the fifth house, right? That's Leo, really about the self, you know, that first ray of willpower. And then it also is, 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 is Hierophant energy. You know what I mean? And Hierophant energy is, 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 is Taurus. And that's talking about, you know, um, it could be talking about work, Okay, so there could be some tensions or there could be some conflicts surrounding work and why something isn't working. It could be with like uh, a family member for some of you guys, right? Because you're experiencing some family stuff, right? I mean, you're going to be around them. It's the holidays. Um, <clears throat> yes. And Venus actually is is representative of the energy of the high priest. And, and Venus right now is in Scorpio. So that... That energy of Scorpio kind of sextiles you. Um, so we're we're thinking about power too. You know, you don't want some you don't want something to have power over you, or you might also be realizing how something might be having a power over you, or it might have some sort of like significant uh, attachment 
um, to you in some kind of way that you might want to detach yourself from or you might want to distance yourself from something. Okay, with that Four of Swords being there. Um, <clears throat> in your sun position, you have the Lord, which is the Emperor. So you have the High Priestess and you have, oh, you have the High Priest, sorry, excuse me. And you have the Lord, right? So here's the High Priest, Taurus energy. Some of you could be dealing with a Taurus or a Leo. And this one is the Lord, which is a four, right? Which is um, Aries, okay? Traditionally known as the emperor. So um, the Lord, that's also talking about tensions. This is also talking about conflict. So you're focused on some conflict right now and you're determined to do something about it. You're determined to deal with whatever this conflict is. You know what I mean? But conflict comes so that you can have a resolution. So, the, the, you know, you might just be experiencing this tension because that, that, that's what sort of pops up. You experience that energy of that low vibration or like the, the tensions or whatever it is that might be getting in the way of progression, you know, right? Um, it, it's kind of like um, you've got to bring something to someone's attention so that it can be resolved. You know what I mean? And I feel like you are taking on the responsibility of doing that um, in some kind of way. You know, this could be with a boss. This could be with some kind of authority figure. This could even be with a father or a parent. <clears throat> Maybe you guys just don't even know what to say. You know what I mean? You've probably been getting ready. There's some like anticipation here. There is some sort of focus that's being brought to, you know, um, an assertion that there is going to be some form of completion that is determined by an individual within this situation. Right? I'm getting put a stop to something. Okay? So now let's look at your moon position. The moon is about to be new in Sagittarius on the 27th, I believe, 26th. And that's around the time that Neptune is actually going to be going direct in Pisces, which is your house of relationships. So Virgo, if there's something that's been confusing you in terms of your relationships, in terms of your marriages, in terms of, you know, just the, the responsibilities that you have within your relationships, then those types of things are going to start to clear up for you. You got the King of Swords in the moon position, and this is Aquarius, okay? And it's one-third Capricorn energy, which trines you. But uh, this is also a card that is ruled by Saturn so much, right? Because in, in Uranus, okay? <clears throat> and Uranus is also trining your energy, Virgo, in... Taurus right now. Uh, and I believe that Uranus is going to be the only planet that's going to still be in retrograde once Neptune goes direct. All the planets will then be direct. Um, King of Swords. Okay, so this is you really having a clear head. I feel like you've learned your lesson in terms of something, right? You've gone through the feelings. You've gone through the evolution of the emotional process, right? And trying to figure some things out. you got clarity in a position that's otherwise, you know, uh, confusing, right? The moon position can be confusing. It's talking about hidden things. But then you have the king of swords there, which is saying that there's clarity coming in whatever area that you felt like you maybe didn't have all the information or maybe there were some hidden issues. Somebody might be stubborn to talk to. <coughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> I feel like you might even be trying to get somebody's attention like, in little ways, by like maybe even just reaching out to them, communicating, like sending a text or sick, you know, anything. Social media, and it's kind of like you're you're trying to give this person one up to kind of like let them approach you or let them say something, right? Let them take on the take the responsibility that they have within their relationships, right? Which Saturn is exalted in Libra, and Libra's talking about relationships, and we have a great responsibility when we form relationships with others, and that is why Saturn is very significant to Libra. Okay, and it also is a ruler of Aquarius, which Aquarius has a significant relationship to that Libra energy too, because this is talking about we want to, we, you know, it, it's almost like it was harmonious and now it's kind of like not harmonious anymore, but there's that tension and people are kind of like in their feelings in terms of like who they think they are and who others should see them as, right? But, you know, 
neither here nor there. there. Someone is wrong. Maybe both people are wrong. Maybe there's some things that both people need to kind of just like clear up, you know, because these are very um, strong energies and they're like court cards almost, right? You have a major arcana, which is the high priest. And then you have the Lord, which is the emperor. Okay, that's a, that's a court card. Uh, and the king of swords is a court card as well, right? The king of swords. This is also even talking about changing up the way that you may have seen some a situation, right? Because you have experience now. It's almost like you know. You can almost predetermine what someone might say or what someone might do. Um, but this is definitely saying that you're rising above a situation, right? That you might have otherwise had some emotional attachment to in, 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 in your quest to figure out what it was that was happening. You know what I mean? And I feel like it might have been a lot of work for you to come to the, to get to this place. But now you're kind of like, okay, I know, I know, I know. Because that's Aquarius's motto, I know. All right, so let me go ahead and flip over your uh, past. Oh, in the past, uh, recent past, you have the Wheel of Fortune. That's Jupiter. Jupiter's in Sagittarius, and it's about to go forward and move into Capricorn. And if you're sidereal or Vedic, then uh, it's in Scorpio, and it's about to go into Sagittarius, okay? So um, <clears throat> this is talking about completion, right? This is also talking about uh, the awareness of um, <laughs> the completion of something, right? accepting an, an opportunity to maybe distance yourself from something. Maybe you had to distance yourself from something in the past, right? And this is also a circle of protection. So some of you could be feeling like you need to protect your energy and that's why you might be distancing yourself uh, from a lot of different things, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of different things going on. So that's why, you know, overwhelming energy sometimes makes us go in repose and makes us retreat, right? Jupiter definitely does also rule Pisces and Pisces is an energy that wants to retreat. You know what I mean? That type of thing. So you could be dealing with a Pisces or you could be dealing with a, a, a um, what am I saying? A Sagittarius. Happy Sag season, you guys. And also, you know, you are squaring that Sag energy, right? So there, there could be some tensions with a Sagittarius, right? Or a fiery person who is kind of all over the place or, or on, their actions are unclear, right? So you could be dealing with something like that. Uh, let's look at your future position. Okay, I was just talking about this energy of the two of swords, and then it's kind of like the Roman numeral two, and those two swords look like an 11 next to each other, which is very Aquarian, the 11th house, right? And then it's also very like high priestess. It is the moon in Libra, and then it's also talking about relationships or relating to an understanding or two different understandings, right? You might be having to make a choice that is significant, right? E e either one of these decisions that you choose or any, any one of these people, that you might choose or any one of these jobs that you might choose or any one of these directions that you might be feeling like you want to go in. You might want to move here. You might want to move there. Or you might want to change jobs and you're trying to determine which one is the best, um, you know, setup for you. You might be wanting to change homes or something like that. Or you might just be trying to determine which way to go with the friendship, right? A relationship that you may have feel like you might have outgrown or you might have even emotionally evolved out of or away from. Something kind of like that, okay? Um, <clears throat> it is the moon in Libra. <laughs> so let's go ahead and... Um, your decision to make, too. Mmm. The moon. Right? Esoterically, the moon rules you. Okay? The moon is number 18, which is a 9. And that refers back to the hermit, which is Virgo, which is you. So this is talking about evolution. This is talking about hidden things. This is talking about gaining clarity. This is talking about cleansing yourself spiritually and emotionally. This is also talking about not letting things... <coughs> affect you so much that it's getting in the way of you being able to go through your your natural rhythm of things you know because the moon is very easily affected as it you know is significant to pisces and cancer right and it is in its fall in scorpio and we had a scorpio new moon recently right <clears throat> 
and we had a Taurus full moon as well. And you have a lot of Taurus cards here. And then you have the moon card here at the top. Okay. You could even be dealing with a Scorpio. Or you could be dealing with some energy that's making you feel like there's a change. That is making you feel a little bit like it's transformative. And when I mean transformative, I mean like you really have to understand that something, it might be different in a way that makes it very significant. Right? And, and, and uh uh, it's a significant change in the dynamic, okay? Something like that. Because the emperor is Aries, and that's the sun. That's talking about creativity, and it's talking about action. It's talking about strength and willpower, you know what I mean? And it's also talking about accepting one's own responsibility and authority, right? Okay? And then you have Pluto also, right? Which is a co-ruler, <laughs> Uh, with Mars in Aries, okay? And that's significant to Scorpio, right? The house of transformation, the eighth house, right? Of power and weakness, one of those houses of power. You know, there's a couple of them. Um, right, but this is the awareness of what you believe. This is like my own belief in, in, in self. And what, this is what I, what I have formed for myself. This is what I've set in place. These are the rules. These are the guidelines. This is how I want to be respected. This is how I want to be, you know, revered. Okay? But the moon position is talking about changes and, and uh, developing evolutionary things, right? Growth. Um, growth, conflict, resolution. You know what I mean? It's the awareness of, of the, possibilities, the possibilities of what can happen, learning from that, and then making the best out of it. Okay, really? So that's what it's talking about, making the best out of a situation that you otherwise probably thought was like just not good or not fun or not meant for you. Let's go, pull out an oracle card here from the uh, Oracle of the Radiant Sun. I'm going to, okay, Harmony. I got this card last night. This is Sun in Libra. So this is talking about getting getting a situation back to that being balanced out, you know? Feeling good about something or feeling relieved because this energy of the Sun in Libra, the Sun is debilitated in Libra, right? But... The sun is in its house of relationships, right? So you're really focused on how to bring about balance to a situation that you may have felt like was challenging you or might have made you feel like it was taking you through some ups and some downs or might have even, you know, been misunderstood, right? You might have misunderstood a situation or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a sign that's ruled by Venus. This is taking this is taking back the pleasure for yourself. You know what I mean? Because you know other people won't really be uh, focused on you having a pleasurable experience, right? You kind of have to make sure that you know you do that for yourself. But then also, you know, it is talking about being fair to yourself and it's talking about being fair to others and it is talking about a responsibility, you know what I mean? Because the son doesn't want to take on the responsibility of, of having to bring focus to how it relates to an experience, you know what I mean? And seeing the beauty in something. It is also talking about taking the drama out as well, you know, take the drama out of an experience, you know, diffuse the drama that type of thing. Let's see what these other cards were, but I'm not going to go too far into it. Defense. Somebody might be feeling defensive, right? Intuit, intuition. <laughs> uh, Mercury and Cancer. Okay. And then we have egotism. So someone's ego. And then we have protection, right? So you could be protecting yourself from someone's ego intuitively out of, you know, defense for yourself to maintain a certain level of harmony within the experience so that you don't, uh, you know, feel like it's not worth it or something like that, you know? Um, 
Yes, Virgo, this was fierce. Thank you for being so patient with me this month. Um, I'm gonna get out of here and I will see you all very soon. I'll be posting some more videos. I think that next I'm gonna either do Pisces or Libra. I usually try to keep it to the sign and the sign that opposes it or you know, whatever I just feel. <laughs> anyway, so thank you so much. Like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. If you'd like to book a reading with me, I am Providence Tarot Kendrick at gmail.com. If you'd like to get a reading with me in person, you can do that at Om Shanti Bookshop and Crystal Gallery in New York City at 230 East 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenues near Union Square in the East Village area. My other accounts on IG are NYC Kendrick, my personal account, and then you can also follow Kendrick NYC, which is, you know, they are images around the city of New York. And then you can also follow the Tongue Pop, which is my food account. I just put up visual, uh, inspirational photos of food that I um, plate and um, I design, you know, uh, food photography. So, uh, yes, and Providence Tarot, of course. Thank you all. I love my Virgos. You guys are always coming through. And I hope that you got some information from this reading today. Okay? Thank you so much. If you're in New York City, come to Theater Row and uh see the chase brock experience dance there it's a show about climate change but it is dance theater it is modern dance it's ballet it's all of those things very exciting um so yeah check out theater row that's theater with the t-r-e at the end and um yeah all right thank you so much <laughs>